Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video as much as I did. I, I've really, I've looked at lots of videos that are explaining how to use condoms and I just love the guy's voice and then the way that the, like this image that they captured in this still is perfect. And so hopefully that really drove home a lot of the, the proper use of condoms advice. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, I'm sorry, I'm going to probably m multiple times make comparisons between um, how we have handled the HIV epidemic that came out in the 80s and into the 90s um, and how we're handling coronavirus in our modern era. Um, I Just for context, I'm recording this video in October of 2020. Um, so back in the early days of the HIV epidemic, I was struggling between epidemic or pandemic, right? It's all around the world too. Um, people were arguing that condoms would be useless against HIV because the pores in condoms are large enough for HIV to pass through. And that is actually a true fact. That is a fact, but it's um, irrelevant because in with the proper use of condoms, prior to anything having time to migrate through any pores, the penis has been withdrawn and the condom has been removed and, you know, all the things that we are doing to prevent pregnancy also prevent HIV from passing through the pores of a condom. Um, so with the proper use of condoms, we make sure that it turns out actually that this, uh, the pores in a condom are actually large enough for a sperm to make it through also. And so we don't want to keep, stay coupled um, after ejaculation has occurred when using a condom. As soon as ejaculation has occurred, you have to withdraw, remove the condom and discard it properly. And then the penis cannot come into contact with the vulva until it's been showered, really, because there could be sperm on that penis. Uh, that's proper use of condoms. And that's also why condoms are very effective in preventing HIV, because if you use them correctly, nothing has time to pass through those pores. The problem is a lot of people don't use them correctly. So I thought I'd talk about the effectiveness to start off with. Theoretically, 2% of the time, a person who's using condoms for a year, a woman should end up pregnant after that time, when in actuality, it's more like 18%. Um, a lot of people who use condoms do not use them correctly. They, um, one of my favorite incorrect things to do is um, while attempting to put on a condom in the dark, they will pull it out of the package. They'll start to put it to try and roll it down and they'll realize, oh, I've got it upside down. They'll flip it over and then roll it down and then have sex. And of course, we all have been talking about Cowper's fluids and what can be contained in that. It's possible. Or if we just recently had sex and I still have sperm from that on the tip of my penis and I go to roll down the condom. Oh, no, it's the wrong way. Flip it over. Roll it down. Now there's like sperm loaded on the tip of the penis, uh, on the tip of the condom. Um, you know, just little things like that inhibit the effectiveness of male condoms. Like they should be a lot more effective than they turn out to be in real life. The advantages though, again, they're easy to acquire. Now, like I said, with spermicide, you might have to go to the counter and ask for a condom because they've, they've gotten sick of them being shoplifted all the time because people are embarrassed to buy them. But, um, you know, you can, you can buy them in a lot of stores. You can order them from the internet uh, you know, on a lot of college campuses, they're given away free at, you know, student programs, offices and things like that. Um, some schools have vending machines that, you know, dispense them, you know, anything that we can do to make reduce that embarrassment so that it increases the likelihood that people will use them, I think is a really great thing. So um, that ease of acquisition is a really important aspect. Um, and just like, you know, with spermicide, you don't, you want to start trying to get pregnant, well, then don't use condoms next time, right? You can stop any time, right? Um, there are minimal risks. There are some risks I'll talk about in a second, but minimal compared to like hormonal birth control methods. They're relatively inexpensive. Um, again, it's, it can range from free, depending on where you're getting them to, you know, if you, if you buy them at certain kinds of outlets and with certain kinds of, you know, extra, um, tentacles sticking off of them and other things. They can cost more, but they're relatively inexpensive. And here's probably the biggest advantage that male condoms offer. And that is that they are the only thing that we have that can protect against 
many of our sexually transmitted infections. Not all of them, unfortunately, it doesn't work for everything. Um, and we'll talk about that more when we get to STIs. Um, but it's the only thing that protects against most of the things that it protects against. So it actually is really effective against um, bacterial infections, um, some of the viral infections. So, and it's the only one. So it's your only hope if, if um, you're worried about contracting STIs. Disadvantages, the minimal risk aspect that I was uh, alluding to is that some people are allergic to condom, uh, sorry, uh, latex or to spermicides. Um, so one of the things, if a person's allergic to the latex, they can do is use polyurethane condoms. But then I have to say those are actually um, more prone to breakage. So a person who's got a latex allergy might want to use some other um, birth control method if they can, um, or um, female condoms or something that we're going to talk about in a little bit. With the spermicidal allergy, you can get condoms that don't have spermicide impregnated in them. So just, you know, make sure that you avoid the spermicidal type. Again, I would say, you know, before you put something on your penis, rub it on the inside of your forearm and see if you have a skin reaction to it, right? Because you do not want to have, you know, generalized swelling of the penis. And that's how you find out that you're allergic. Um, it's easy to use it incorrectly. So that is definitely a, a major disadvantage. People think that they're protected and then they use it in the wrong way and they end up actually, you know, you might as well not have done anything, right? So you want to use them correctly. The disadvantage of male condoms and spermicides, they both suffer from lack of spontaneity. You have to know that, okay, this activity that we're engaging in is going to lead to coitus. And we both, I mean, it, we, we have to know where this is going because I don't want to waste one of my condoms or whatever. And so you have to sort of be a lot clearer about where where the behaviors are leading, then you might have to do if you're using hormonal birth control or something like that, where we can kind of be more spontaneous. All right, so I mentioned female condoms a second ago. And so I thought um, I'll let Planned Parenthood explain them and show you what they look like and stuff. And then we'll come back after that. 